All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Learn Solidity in 2024 series. My name is Mark, and I'm a blockchain developer. And in this series, I'm going to teach you how to develop for the Ethereum blockchain, which is one of the most fascinating technologies that I have ever encountered in my entire life and which has the potential to do a lot of good provided it's used wisely. Now, if this is a topic that interests you, then hit like at the bottom of this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get all of the uploaded lessons in this series because you don't want to miss it. And you don't want to miss this because the value of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether are going up. And as they go up, the opportunities for developers and entrepreneurs such as yourself start to abound. So if you're interested in getting one of those six-figure blockchain development jobs, there's a lot of opportunity for you. They pay really, really well, but you have to be really good at knowing how to develop for Ethereum. Now, if you're more inclined to be an entrepreneur, there are also a lot of income generating opportunities for those who choose to be blockchain entrepreneurs. A lot of blockchain developers are entrepreneurs, but the bottom line is that there is a huge amount of wealth generating opportunity here for you. Now, the crux of this series is learning about a very powerful language called Solidity. And Solidity lets you create these computer programs that are called smart contracts. And smart contracts aren't really smart. What they really are are just these indestructible computer programs that get deployed to a blockchain that can self-execute and are automated and can have a lot of very powerful built-in economic functions programmed into them. So these computer programs are built for blockchains and blockchain is all about disintermediating the middleman. Now, taking things a little bit further, once you start to develop smart contracts, you actually, you start to realize that the whole world of finance is actually built on top of all sorts of contracts. Contracts rule the world. Contracts are the supreme law of the universe. So when you learn solidity, you're really sort of marrying your knowledge of how to create these indestructible blockchain programs with all sorts of financial arrangements that can be automated and encoded into a blockchain system. Now, my name is Mark. And I am a blockchain developer and I'm a contractor on the side. And I love teaching people like you how to build for open digital systems because I really believe in them. And I developed the web application for Notional Finance, which is a DeFi protocol that's currently on mainnet. And the way that I teach developers like you how to wield this powerful programming language called Solidity is I teach them how to develop decentralized exchanges. When you build for blockchain, you gotta know what to build for blockchain. Well, decentralized exchanges are one of the major use cases of why you would use a blockchain to begin with. So if you know how to write this, then you really, really do know the Solidity programming language. Now, before we begin, we always got to start asking the fundamental questions like, well, why should we use public decentralized blockchains to begin with? Well, the reason that we should use them is because they're permissionless, they're censorship resistant, they are collectively maintained by a network of participants who are all crypto economically incentivized to keep the system up and running. And they're not controlled by any kind of centralized Silicon Valley tech corp. They're not owned by them. They're not owned by a bank or by a government or by a, a Wall Street firm. They're maintained independently through a decentralized network of participants. So it can't ever be shut down. Blockchains like Ethereum can't be shut down and Nobody can press a button to shut it down and they facilitate all sorts of direct peer-to-peer -peer value transfers. But not only that, decentralized blockchains are built on top of a form of cryptography called 
public key cryptography, which means that if you want to work with these systems, you got to generate a wallet. And a wallet is made out of a public and a private key, and you have to be responsible to maintain your private key. But because you have your private key, you and only you have control over your assets and your data that flow through these blockchain systems. Well, this is so important for us to leverage right now because the rulers of the world are openly telling us that by the year 2030, you will own nothing and you will be happy. And what we have seen in recent years is the government actually freezing people's bank accounts. It happened in Canada during the trucker convoy protest. And in addition to this, central bankers are telling us that they want to push us into a centrally controlled digital currency system via some CBDC. So decentralized blockchains like Ethereum make use of a public virtual ledger that nobody owns and controls. And that's why we're all figuring out how to tap into it and put as much value into these decentralized ledgers as possible. So blockchain doesn't have a central point of control. It can never be shut down. It's permissionless and it's censorship resistant. And when you learn how to leverage this technology for your enrichment, you also start to realize that you're programming for a cryptographic system built on top of public key cryptography, which means that as a developer, you're gonna to have to acknowledge that authentication and authorization work differently in open digital systems like Ethereum. Now, before we go deeper into Solidity, we have to first answer the question, so what is Ethereum really? Well, Ethereum is allowing us to develop two super hot niches right now, DeFi and NFTs, but Ethereum is the network of decentralized services and nobody owns and controls them. It's also a cryptographic system and it's also a virtual operating system from your perspective as a developer. So as a Solidity developer who's starting to learn the Solidity programming language, you're building for a virtual operating system called Ethereum. And inside this virtual operating system, there's a computer. And that computer is called the Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM for short. Now from a computer science perspective, Ethereum is known as a deterministic state machine, which means it's made up of this globally accessible singleton state and the EVM, this virtual machine, constantly applies changes to that state. And the changes to that state can only be initiated by an externally owned account, which is a wallet holder. And all of these state changes get synchronized to a blockchain. That's really what a blockchain really is at the end of the day. It's just a data structure. But the cooler thing about Ethereum is that we don't just synchronize these constant state changes when we transfer value peer to peer. We can also deploy these indestructible censorship resistant computer programs called smart contracts. And smart contracts get fed into this computer called the EVM which sits inside of the Ethereum virtual operating system. And Ethereum has a native utility token called Ether that's actually used to meter and constrain execution resource costs, but it has a lot of value because it's publicly traded. So there's a lot to know about Ether, but in a briefer nutshell, there are only two types of accounts that can be created on Ethereum. And the essence of Ethereum programming is programming all sorts of peer-to-peer value transfers without a middleman that get registered on a public virtual ledger that nobody owns and controls. Now, a smart contract on Ethereum gets deployed at an address and it doesn't exist in one single location. It exists everywhere on every single node in the network, but you communicate with a smart contract through its address and you talk to it by sending it a transaction. So if you wanted to call a function on a smart contract, you would send it a transaction. That transaction would talk to the EVM, which would process whatever smart contract function you're calling, and it would produce a receipt to tell you what the result of that transaction would be. But there are really only two accounts that exist on Ethereum, an externally owned account, 
which is a wallet account that a regular user would use, and then a contract account, which is an account for smart contracts. What is just so amazing about this thing is how Ethereum is collectively maintained by thousands of connected computers called nodes, each running an Ethereum client. So Ethereum is a bunch of computers communicating on the internet and nobody owns it. It's collectively maintained by everybody. Now, one thing about interacting with a system like Ethereum is that you have to pay for something called gas. And that's because whenever you call a function on a smart contract on Ethereum, what you're basically doing is you're using a computer. You're using a virtual computer that's not controlled by anybody. And somebody might want to abuse it. So that's why gas is a critical part of the Ethereum blockchain. And Ether is really a utility token that is designed to meter and constrain execution resource costs. And it's a way of preventing somebody from abusing this computer. We call the Ethereum virtual machine. And as a Solidity developer, you gotta get good at making your transactions as cheap in terms of gas as possible. Now, what are you gonna be learning in this series? Well, you will definitely be learning all about writing smart contracts, which by the way, are made up of data and functions, or what we call code. And a contract gets compiled into bytecode, and it also gets compiled into something called the ABI, the Application Binary Interface. And it has to get compiled into the ABI because everything on Ethereum is bytecode. So a smart contract gets compiled into bytecode. What you see before you is a smart contract. That's what exists on Ethereum. And you have to know how to talk to hexadecimal bytecode. And why is everything stored in bytecode? Well, because Ethereum holds a vast amount of data and it has to compress that data as best as it can so the system can be scalable. So when you code a contract, underneath the hood, all the functions that are being called are being encoded into bytecode because all communication on Ethereum is done in bytecode. And as you progress in this series, you're gonna learn more and more about how to call that bytecode and access that bytecode to do whatever kind of financial transaction you wanna do. Now, the other really cool thing about writing smart contracts is that you can program them to receive money. So contracts can send money, but they can also hold a balance. They can hold a lot of money. So you gotta know how to program smart contracts to receive money. And as a Solidity developer, you're programming with money natively, which is not an ability we've ever really seen before. You're literally programming with money natively. And one of the things that you have to get good at as a Solidity developer are certain aspects of object-oriented programming. And of course, you gotta be able to fend off potential attacks, of which there are many in this field. So to get these really, really high paying jobs, there's a lot to know, but there's a lot of opportunity in the field of DeFi. Now, another thing to keep in mind when you build for DeFi is that there really are two runtime targets that you need to develop for. The first one being the Ethereum virtual machine, but the other runtime target is the web. And that's because we need to give regular users the ability to tap into these decentralized products. So that's what Ethereum is all about, and that's what you're learning how to develop for. So in this series, I'm gonna cover the main topics of what you need to know to master the Solidity programming language and build for Ethereum. This is gonna be a fascinating series for you to tune into, so if you haven't done so already, like this video, and be sure to subscribe to my channel because that six-figure blockchain developer job is waiting for you. Now, if you're one of those developers who's looking to get a six-figure blockchain job within the next two weeks, then definitely head over to my website at defidevelopacademy.com 
and check out my latest offering, the Solidity Deep Dive. Now that's for those who want to dive deeper into the Solidity programming language right now. It's the only training program of its kind that exists on the internet and it teaches you everything that you need to know about writing smart contracts in Solidity for the Ethereum virtual machine. And it teaches you Solidity in the context of implementing a very, very well-known decentralized business model called an automated market maker, which is a very clever combination of economics, maths, and IT in the form of smart contracts that allow you to create decentralized exchanges for blockchains like Ethereum. So head on over to DeFiDeveloperAcademy.com right now and check out the Solidity Deep Dive. It's going to be available for a short time only. And in the next episode of this series, I'm going to introduce you to the Ethereum virtual machine. So I'll see you in the next episode.